Microevolution. Hi there, this is a brief video that will review what is microevolution. Let's begin. As you can probably guess already, microevolution is the evolution of species on a small scale. The first term that you have to get acquainted to is variation, which implies a qualitative or quantitative difference, whether in the form of behavior as well as morphology. Perceiving variations can be as clear as looking at two different living organisms, such as a plant and a pelican, and listing the different features like that. But there could also be differences within the one species, such as huskies and golden retrievers, within the dog's species. Like many distributions that occur in nature, traits in a species can be graphed on a normal distribution. The bell curve can show how a certain little minute factor such as a gene or certain environmental pressure can influence the distribution of certain traits. For example, traits such as height could be plotted on the graph, with the tallest organisms on one side, usually the right, and the shortest on the other, usually the left. These then are mapped and statistical measures such as standard deviation are used to measure this variation. Height in this example may skewer left or right or if the environment prefers short animals, since they are good at fitting into smaller crevices, which are good at hiding from predators. Tall organisms, tall organisms may also be good in warding off predators, because they may be seen as much more stronger and powerful, intimidating their foe to hunt something much more small and easy. The point is, the population curve helps measure the distribution of traits, or what we call variation, and that is important in deducing the continual microevolution of species and preference for those said traits. Mutations is the second important word, and refer to the mistakes in the copying of the oxyribose nucleic acid, or DNA, which is the molecular code for life. These mutations include duplication, which are when one too many copies of a chunk of DNA are produced. If copied chunks mutate further, this can allow the creation of new traits without losing the original, hence necessary for organisms to change, evolve, adapt. There are, of course, also mutations that are not so good, such as when beneficial traits are removed or harmful ones gained which can cause problems ranging from Huntington's disease down to being more prone to certain cancers. Gene flow is the distribution of genetic material, with the same species which is kept by the ability to be able to reproduce with one another. It keeps different populations that might be isolated as the same species and allows the continued exchange of genes to reproduce. Side note, gene flow agents such as, for example, birds that help drop the seeds of plants help to allow for greater diversity and adaptability since the birds fly to new locations and environments that foster different traits for the plants. Bottleneck is another important term in biology and it implies a genetic drift that limits genetic variation, restricting diversity and the eventual respread of the population. The next generation that uh, regrows after the bottlenecks are somewhat less diverse than compared to the original gene pool. Bottlenecks are caused by rapid changes in the environment, human cause and natural disasters. The founder effect. It occurs in small populations in which a collection of genes is limited and a certain geographic region can trace their origin to a few uh, individuals. An example of this includes the Amish, the Amish, who were founded by a small gene pool and interbred, resulting in some individuals having extra digits on their hands, since there is little diversity to counteract the mistakes in genetic combination. The founder effect could also be the result of a bottleneck in which the successive generations after the survivors have very little genetic diversity and have a small gene pool.
Natural selection is another important idea that was created by Charles Darwin. And if you want to learn more about them, please click this link to another video I made about this very topic. Anyway, there are three important types of selection in natural selection. There is directional selection. And when the population has the traits, shift away from the traits that are detrimental or harmful, harmful to survival. For example, horses evolved to be the size they are today from smaller ones. They hit a limit of how big they can grow because the costs of having to haul around more muscle and bones uh, and longer reproduction and life cycles are too well, costly. Stabilizing selections are when the distribution narrows over a period of time to become more of the same variation, which reduces the diversity but increases homogeneity. An example includes birth weights, averaging around the same as to not be too light, which would hinder the neurological and physiological growth of the infant, but not too big that the infant can't even fit through the birth canal. Disruptive selection are when the normal population favour traits of two extremes and hence become more diverse. The mode or most of a certain trait decreases and the two separate populations start drifting apart. Sexual selection, according to Darwin, is seen as, a dif is seen as different to natural selection. Since the traits develop here don't exactly help the species to survive at all, but it does help them to reproduce by appealing to their preferred uh, preference for a certain trait within the species. Quote unquote, Darwin said that sexual selection is the, every, the advantage which certain individuals have over individuals of the same sex and species. An exclusive relation to reproduction. There are two types of this form of selection, which include intrasexual selection, which are when males fight or contest each other to gain access to females. Intersexual selection are when females choose the male mate. The result of sexual selection include sexual dimorphism, when males and females of a species look completely different. For example, peacocks look more colourful than their mates, and peahens, uh, the peahens, who are the females of the species, do not. Thank you for watching.